action! Hi guys, how's it going? This is Amanda from Amanda Around the Globe and I recently got a wonderful question which I am really surprised I've never talked about before. Someone asked me, how do I prevent travel burnout? It's happened to me a few times to be honest and usually it kind of feels like you're in a new place but you have no desire to explore, you don't want to do anything other than lay in bed, you're exhausted, you're unmotivated and you don't even care about seeing where you are, you don't care about new experiences, you just don't wanna do anything. Travel burnout is a thing, it's real and it happens. It's happened to me a lot of times and recently I've come up with a few ways to prevent this feeling because it's a terrible feeling. These are 14 tips on how to prevent travel burnout. Number one is take breaks. When you're traveling, it's really common to try to fit everything into one trip. It's really important to take breaks during the day, to slow down, relax, appreciate where you are instead of trying to fit everything in. Tip number two is travel slowly. So this one really, really helped me. When I had travel burnout the first time I was in Europe and I had been traveling to a new city every three to four days, by the time I got to Paris, I was so exhausted. I was in Paris and I didn't want to do anything. That's depressing. I decided to extend my trip in Paris for an extra week, cut some other cities out of my itinerary and just enjoy where I was. And that was one of the best decisions I have ever made. Number three is schedule relaxing activities. So in between all of your walking and your hiking and your tours and your adventures, you're gonna get exhausted. So try to schedule some things that are like downtime, maybe a massage, maybe uh, some sauna time or just, a, just some time at a spa. Like just make sure you have time to relax and kind of refresh and rejuvenate and get your energy back and do something that's just very calming and peaceful. Number four, this is one of my biggest tips, is to stay somewhere that you are comfortable. I have to admit, when I first started traveling, I was very focused on saving money, and this kind of translated into staying wherever I could that was the cheapest, and that is not always the best idea, because eventually, you will just hate yourself. Like, I was not happy after a while because I was couch surfing, I had no alone time. I'm, I'm actually a very introverted person. I need my alone time to recharge my batteries. Because I like being around people, but I also need my alone time, I prefer to stay in private rooms and hostels or like an Airbnb. This ensures that I'm still around people and I still have the opportunity to be social, but at the same time, I am not draining all of my energy by constantly being around people. Number five is focus on self-care. So really just take care of yourself. Do things that you would normally do at home. Make sure you're still eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Make sure you're still drinking a lot of water and make sure you're still getting enough sleep. Which brings me to number six is eat well. So it can be really tempting to eat out for every meal and eat a lot of whatever the cultural food is there. For example, pizza and pasta if you're in Italy, which is what I did. I ate pizza and pasta for a week straight and I felt like crap by the end of it. Of course, try the food. I'm not saying not to try the food, but make sure you're still maintaining a balance of health. And number seven is make sure you're getting enough sleep. So just make sure you're getting enough sleep, you're going to bed early, you're letting yourself sleep in if you stayed out late. Don't try to do everything at once because life is just too short to be exhausted. Number eight is don't do everything in one trip. So it's not really worth it to try to cram everything into one trip. Your experience will be different if you try to cram everything in versus if you just enjoy what you have. And I can pretty much guarantee you that your experience will be much better if you're just enjoying the time that you have there and doing things kind of as they come versus following a strict itinerary. So for me, that means doing things like just planning a day to just walk around the city, go into a bookstore, maybe have a glass of wine, just really enjoy where you are and take in the culture and do things that the locals would do instead of booking yourself like crazy. Number nine is set up a routine. So having some kind of a routine on vacation will help you a lot because you're your mind is just not always constantly stimulated. You have something to rely on and to fall back on. So this can be as simple as having a shower every night, like a long shower before you go to bed, um, having breakfast at the same time every day, 
having a coffee at the same place every day. Uh, it couldn't be basically any kind of routine, but just having something that is stable in your life will help a lot. Number 10 is get out in nature. This is one of my favorite ones also, and I did not realize the importance of this until way too long into my travels. So getting out in nature really, really helps me recharge my batteries. It really helps me like take a break from city life, take a break from the hustle and bustle, and just be somewhere calm and relaxing and really rejuvenating. My favorite thing to do in nature is to hike, and I really recommend checking out hiking trails around where you're going because you also usually get a good view at the top of wherever you're hiking to. So there's a little added bonus in there. <laughs> uh, number 11 is splurge a little bit. Probably have noticed by now that I do tend to be really strict with myself with money sometimes. And every now and then I will let myself splurge a little bit and I never regret these splurges. I will be honest with you. There are so many things I've splurged on that I have no regrets about. So one of them was I rented a hotel room one night for like a hundred dollars a night, which I never book anything that expensive. But when I was in Europe, I was just so tired one night. I just wanted to be on my own. I didn't want to be in a hostel. I didn't want to be around any people. I wanted to be comfortable. And so I just went on booking.com and got a hotel for a hundred dollars a night. And I'll be honest, it was one of the best nights of my life. Like, I jumped on the bed, I had a long hot shower, I made a tea, like I just sat there and journaled, and it was really refreshing and really, really nice. I've also splurged on things like tours, I've splurged on things like meals, I've splurged on wine in places that wine is not common, like in Thailand, for example, a bottle of wine is like $30, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Number 12 is change up the pace. So if you've been traveling really slowly, if you've been in one place for a really long time, maybe it's time to just go somewhere else. But alternatively, if you've been moving around really quickly, maybe it's time to take it a little bit slower. So I kind of had travel burnout without even knowing I had travel burnout. At one point when I was in Colombia, I was in Cali, Colombia for two weeks, and that is not the most safe place so I just was spending a lot of time at the hostel and there were some really great people there and I had a really good time but I kind of started to feel really um, down and I didn't really know why and one of my friends told me that I just needed to get out of there and it was so true once I left I just felt so much better and I felt that sense of travel again and that sense of adventure and yeah so it really really helps to change up your environment change up your pace sometimes and just really focus on trying to pay attention to what you feel like you need Number 13 is to do things differently. So <laughs> I know I just said that it's good to have a routine, but it is also good to do things differently. What I mean by this is if you are used to traveling by bus, then maybe splurge a little bit and take a flight. Or if you're used to flying, maybe change it up and take a bus. Maybe try overnight train. Just change things up a little bit and make sure that you're constantly experiencing new things because that's the point of travel. <laughs> And then number 14, which is one of the biggest ones, is to let go of expectations. So a lot of people that I know have had experiences where they imagine a place being a certain way and then they get there and it's not like that at all. This is really, really common. So if you have this experience, don't feel bad about it. But also just be aware that the point of traveling is to experience them as they are, not as you want them to be. So really just think about that and Recognize the importance of travel and how much you can learn from different cultures and all of that good stuff. I love traveling because I have learned so much since I've been traveling. I can't believe it's been over a year and a half. I've, I feel like a completely different person, to be honest. I've been traveling full time for like almost two years now, actually. I started traveling in October of 2015, which is absolutely insane to me. Yeah, I hope this video helped you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Leave your video suggestions, suggestions in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.